Welcome aboard Regatta. This is one of Oceania Cruises' elegant global cruise ships. With a gross tonnage of just over 30,000, this ship is considered small ship cruising in today's growing global cruise market. However, she offers some surprising amenities and welcoming interior spaces that bring passengers back to this ship year after year. So come with me aboard Regatta to explore the ship and find out what makes her so popular among the 300 plus cruise ships that passengers can choose from today. Before we get started, I'd like to let you know that I toured Regatta as a guest of Oceania Cruises, and although they provided access to the ship, I have not been paid to make this video. Let's start our tour on the very top of the ship on deck 11. This is an open air deck and it is here towards the bow that you will find the sporting facilities. This includes a surprisingly well equipped golf putting range as well as a traditional shuffleboard and a sun deck. There are also two showers for passenger use which is handy as on the nearby deck 10 you'll find a fitness track where you can definitely work up a sweat. Deck 10 is also home to more open deck space. There is a well deck that overlooks a swimming pool on deck 9 below. Further aft on deck 10 you will find the Polo Grill and Toscana two of the ship's dining venues. Each of these areas offer sweeping views over the side of the ship, allowing guests who dine here to connect with the ocean and the cruise destinations the ship is visiting. Forward of this is the ship's library. It is a relatively large and pleasant space with a surprisingly good selection of books to enjoy, though I did notice that they don't have any of our titles which I am working on fixing. In a world where cruise ship libraries are merely a token offering, the library aboard Regatta stands out as there are shelves of books for passengers to borrow. At the forward end of Deck 10, you will find Horizons Bar. This large space offers sweeping views over the port, starboard and bow of the ship. It features a small dance floor, a moderate sized bar and plenty of seating. If we stay at the bow of the ship and head down one deck to Deck 9, we will find the spa facility. It's at the very forward of the ship and features a spa terrace which offers outdoor seating and relaxation areas. It includes a moderate sized whirlpool, steam rooms, a fitness centre and a beauty salon. Nearby, the card room offers a quiet place to relax whilst the adjoining Oceania at sea is a place to go to access internet connected computers or set up Wi-Fi. Amidships you'll find the pool which is served by the Waves Bar. Due to the deck above, this area offers both sheltered and unsheltered deck seating. There is a swimming pool surrounded by two whirlpool spas in this area and towards the aft, the Waves Grill and Patio spill out onto the shared deck. The Waves Grill is one of the many dining facilities on board the ship, which for a small ship seems to offer a good range of eating venues. It leads into the Terrace Cafe, which offers sheltered seating on the port and starboard side, as well as a central bar and open deck eating area at the stern. As you make our way through Regatta, you might be wondering what the origin of this ship is. She was one of a series of eight near-identical sister ships built for Renaissance cruises in the 1990s. Completed at Chantier de l'Atlantique shipyard in 1998, she has a gross tonnage of 30,277. The ship was originally named R2, following the naming convention set down by Renaissance to name each ship R with a subsequent numeral suffix, R1, R2, R3 and so forth. Following the failure of Renaissance cruises, in 2002, the ship was chartered to Oceania and named Insignia, until 2003. She briefly left the fleet before returning as Regatta, as, confusingly, the former R1 had subsequently joined the Oceania fleet and was named Insignia in the interim. Let's get back to the tour. Deck 8, 7 and 6 are home to cabins and suites. The ship offers an array of accommodation styles ranging from large balcony cabins to more modest yet well-appointed inside cabins. Corridors and cabins have recently been updated during refurbishments, and hints of the modern and clean styling used by the now parent company NCL can be seen throughout. In fact, some elements of the staterooms reminded me of the refit undertaken aboard the similarly aged Norwegian Spirit, one of my all-time favourite ships. I've linked to tours of her in the description. If we head to the aft staircase and descend to deck 5, we will find the entrance to the Grand Dining Room. This passes through the Grand Bar, which offers both alcoholic drinks, tea and coffee throughout the day. The Grand Dining Room is positioned at the very aft of the ship, with views over the stern. 
We enjoyed a lunch meal here during our tour and the food was well presented and flavorful. The waiters were very attentive and the ambience was extremely pleasant. Though I admit this was a media tour, so I can't personally comment on what the service is like during a regular cruise. But if you know, share your experiences in the comments below. Amidships, the upper hall is the top level of the ship's grand staircase. This Titanic-esque area is one of the hallmarks of the R-Class design which makes sense given the ship's entered service during the peak of excitement around the 1997 James Cameron film. The hall leads into boutique shops, which themselves link to Martini's, one of the ship's most popular bars. Cocktail in hand, you can take a seat in the bar and enjoy the ambience or head forward to the small casino to try your hand on the gaming tables or pokies. Or you may prefer to save your money and take in a show in the ship's forward lounge. I liked this area as it had a small ship feel with modestly terraced seating set out around tables and a bar service for passengers to enjoy. The dance floor and stage sit at the forward end of the room, which is used for evening shows, daytime lectures and other concerts and recitals during the cruise. Deck 5 is also where you'll find the boat deck, and although it is not a wraparound design, it is wide for the size of the ship and a much welcome inclusion in this design. There are plenty of spaces to relax here, with the deck sheltered by the overhanging lifeboats. Deck 4 is home to the reception hall, which leads to the grand staircase. Here you'll find destination services, the ship's concierge, and the reception desk, where all hotel-related queries are managed. There is also a medical centre, which we won't visit as that's no fun, so let me use this time to mention that Deck 3 is the lowest passenger deck and houses a small section of cabins and the tender embarkation platforms. I hope you enjoyed this brief tour of Regatta. I was impressed by what I saw here. From the care taken in maintaining the ship, to the elegant decor choices made, to the style of service and cuisine we retreated to, the ship felt warm, welcoming and friendly. But I haven't cruised on board, so if you have, let me know what you think of her. Why do you love Oceania cruises and what makes Regatta special? Let us know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I hope to see you on board.